Minecraft custom maps provide fresh takes on the game. Whether it's racing to the end with your friends in parkour, enjoying or not enjoying PvP, or being scared with a horror map. There have been many famous ones that have come and gone and that many people feel nostalgia for and remember fondly. If you remember, a few months ago I made a part 1 of this video, and there were a lot of comments asking about other iconic maps that were left off of the list. Since I didn't get to cover everything in that video, let's look at 10 more famous custom maps in Minecraft history that you may have forgotten about. Before I get to the list though, if you're looking for a new lifesteal PvP SMP to play on, look no further than Raccoon Den. Raccoon Den is a brand new lifesteal SMP that features a ton of custom plugins, enchantments, and items. It has an active schedule that includes community events like King of the Hill. There's a full advanced economy as well. I had a blast testing out this server, and if you're a big fan of lifesteal PvP, I think you will love it too. I've left links to everything in the description and pinned comment below. Special thanks to the Raccoon Den Lifesteal SMP for sponsoring this video. Perhaps one of the most talked about map series in part 1's comment section, the first map on the list is Sea of Flame, which comes from the extremely famous Vex's Super Hostile map series. Sea of Flame was the very first installment in this epic saga, being initially released in Beta 1.7.3 in 2011. It is widely considered the first CTM, or Complete the Monument map, ever made. In CTM maps, the goal is simple. Find specific items hidden around the map while surviving super hostile and difficult conditions. Super hostile. Yeah, I did. Once you find the items, usually colored wool or something similar, there will be a victory monument with empty spaces you have to fill. In the case of Sea of Flame number 1, it actually didn't start that way. Early on, it was just a difficult survival map, featuring tons of lava and fire with some starting materials near spawn to give you some chance of surviving before venturing out further. This first version of the map was famously played by the early Minecraft YouTuber Zisto. In the second version of the map, the victory monument was added and chests were scattered throughout with colored wool that you had to collect to complete the challenge. It was a new thing not really ever done before in Minecraft, and thanks to Vex, this genre of custom map blew up considerably for the next 4 or 5 years. Vex went on to make 17 total super hostile maps, a super hostile mod pack, and a super hostile SMP in 2016 which ended up being really popular. I love a good pioneer story in Minecraft, and the story of Vex and Super Hostile is definitely up there on the most famous list. Another famous installment in the Minecraft CTM map genre is Diversity. The first installment of Diversity came a couple years after Sea of Flame, being released in 2013 for Minecraft official release 1.7 by Cube Magnet. It gained immense popularity because it did something no CTM map had before. Instead of the usual MO of finding wool in challenging parts of the map, Diversity required you to complete entirely different genres of custom map within the Diversity map to find the wool, like a parkour dungeon, a survival dungeon, a dropper, etc. This made for a great map to play with your friends, as most Minecraft players are better at some aspects of the game than others. Like me, I cannot parkour or PvP to save my life, but put me in the trivia section of the Diversity map and I'm winning it for the team. Anyway, this mapception thrusted the popularity of diversity to the moon, and some great iconic YouTube series were born from it, like Yogg's Cast, Lewis and Simon, or I Has Cupquake. As the Minecraft map community evolved over the years and new genres were invented, diversity evolved as well, with Q Magnet making diversity 2 and 3 as sequels to the first map. Both featured the multi-genre excellence the first one had, with some new twists and turns and using the new features of the later Minecraft versions. The Diversity Trilogy has definitely firmly cemented itself into Minecraft map history. This next map holds a very, very special place in my heart. The original Hunger Games, or Survival Games map from 2012. You see, something I've hinted at in previous videos is the fact that I used to play Minecraft on a cracked free version. That unlicensed copy message still haunts my dreams. I remember watching a video on the survival games back then and wanting to play it so badly, but I couldn't join with a cracked account. Finally, I took the leap with my mom's credit card and bought the game with lawn mowing money, and it was all due to this map. 
The Minecraft survival games were inspired by the IRL Hunger Games books and movies. The first Hunger Games movie was released in 2012, so when the map came out, it was peak popularity. There was a server, MCPVP, that hosted the original survival games. It had a huge list on the website of hundreds of games running simultaneously, and that's how you would join, finding a game that wasn't full. I'll never forget the first game that I played. I had no idea what I was supposed to do, so I hid in a hole in the middle and crouched while gathering some stone tools. At the very end, it was me and one guy who had gotten all of the diamond gear and killed everyone else. And that's the story of how I took second place in my very first survival games. Anyway, the survival game genre kept its popularity for a very long time, with hundreds or maybe even thousands of different map iterations being made over the years. But this one, the first one, holds tons of nostalgia for many, and is just downright one of the most iconic and recognizable maps ever made in the game. Let's shift gears a little bit into something darker. Let's dive into one of the first horror maps ever made and hands down probably the most popular and consistently voted the scariest. This is The Orphanage. The Orphanage was released in 2014 by Oh Mercy for version 1.7. Before I go into the map, I wanna talk about the command block. Version 1.7 extended the command block character limit from a virgin 256 to a chad 16,369. Nice. This provided map creators with an insane amount of easy customization potential they never had before. That's how horror maps like the Orphanage and early adventure maps really took off, and one of the reasons why 1.7 is one of the most fondly looked upon versions in Minecraft history. Anyway, the Orphanage took the Minecraft world by storm, combining horror games which were reaching their absolute peak in 2014 with the likes of Markiplier and PewDiePie and Minecraft together. The story of the map is that you are lost on a road trip, run out of gas in the middle of nowhere, and then come across the only building for miles and miles, an orphanage that looks abandoned. You decide to take shelter for the night, but are met with jump scares, immense suspense, and some of the best ambiance I've ever experienced in a Minecraft map. Some really famous creators at the time helped put it on the map, like popular MMOs and of course, Dan TDM. Just look at baby Dan doing his thing. The jump scare Dan just experienced became infamously known as the Cellar Jump Scare, scaring the pants off of many people who have played the map. Since the orphanage came out, there have been a plethora of horror maps attempted. Most are terrible, and none of them really reached the space that orphanage did. Just nowhere near as memorable and nostalgic. Now that we're at the halfway point of the video, let's shout out our console friends really quick. I've been a Java player pretty much all of my life, but I did have a brief stint with Xbox 360 Minecraft back in the day, and I know these things hit home for a lot of people who didn't play on PC. So let's talk about one of the best holiday maps ever made for Legacy Console Edition, the Halloween Mashup Pack in 2015. A mashup pack is similar to a Java Edition resource pack, featuring custom skins, textures, and title screens, with the kicker being that they come with a themed world as well. The 2015 Halloween mashup pack was one of the last ones released for Legacy Console, before everything was transferred to today's Bedrock Edition, so it holds a special place in console players' hearts. It has super cool themed spooky builds and a huge minecart roller coaster. Like other mashup packs, there are music discs hidden in chests throughout for you to find. It features a whopping 33 new skins, which is an insane amount. An interesting yet really sad fact about this map is that when they upgraded it to Bedrock Edition, it completely broke. The skybox is missing, no purple clouds, and the lighting and fog are all reverted to vanilla. This was unfortunately never fixed. A kind soul has ported the map to Java Edition, which is what you're seeing on screen, and I've linked that below. One of the earliest complex adventure maps ever made, as well as extremely fondly remembered and put in the spotlight, was the Sunken Island Adventure Map, released in late summer of 2011 by terraforming legend Inhaze. What made Sunken Island an instant success was how beautiful the terrain looked. I mean, this was 2011. 
World Edit was in its infancy, and MC Edit was a shell of what it is today. In fact, In Hayes has stated that at first, an adventure map wasn't even the goal. It was just a custom terrain project to make a really pretty mountainous tropical island. Adventure map status didn't happen until later, when he added objectives, a storyline, and an ending to the map. This was back in the everybody make a let's play era of YouTube, so tons of people tried their hand with Sunken Island. Many, many people look back on this map fondly, and due to it being released so early in the game, it absolutely helped pioneer the adventure map genre, which eventually led to adventure mode literally being added into vanilla Minecraft. Let's go back to Vex and his mapping genius. Next up on the list is the original Capture the Wool map. Similar to Capture the Flag in real life, the way it works is super simple. There are two teams, Team RGB, Red Wool, Green Wool, Blue Wool, and Team CMY, Cyan Wool, Magenta Wool, Yellow Wool, defending their own wool while attacking to capture the enemy team's wool. Since Vex literally invented the capture of the monument genre, it's not so hard to see how he also came up with the multiplayer version of his own creation. So simple, yet such a fun concept. Vex only made one map in the genre, Fields of Glory, which is the one that I'm showcasing. Since this map's inception, there have been many, many iterations and map variants with this game mode. It's been featured on gargantuan minigame servers like Hypixel and the subject of major PvP tournaments over the years. The Fields of Glory map specifically was played pretty extensively by Vicstar back in the day. Other big names too, Preston, Jerome, Bayesian Canadian, Technoblade, rest in peace. Pretty much every recognizable name in the old PvP space has played Capture the Wool. What comes to mind instantly as well is the massive Yogg's Cast Capture the Wool Invitational Tournament from 2021. What a beautiful COVID distraction activity that was. The game mode is still going strong to this day and we have to tip our hat to Vex. Honestly, I'll just say it, Vex was absolutely the most influential early Minecraft map creator of all time. Yet another influential minigame map that took the world by storm is The Walls. Similar to survival games, The Walls is a team-based PvP game where there are four teams split into different sections of the map. You have 15 minutes to gather resources and gear up with your team. Then, The Walls drop and it's a PvP free-for-all. Last standing team is victorious. The very first Walls map, and the one I'm referencing for this video, was released all the way back in 2012 and was created and developed by Hypixel. No, not the server Hypixel. The Hypixel, aka Simon Collins Laflame, the mastermind behind the eventual biggest server the game has ever seen to date. I honestly didn't really know the history behind the server or honestly even knew there was one guy named Hypixel. Please keep your pitchforks at home, I don't know absolutely everything about the history of the game despite what you may think. So when I learned that the guy who originally created it made custom maps back in the day, I was pretty shocked. That is the epitome of a fun fact. Anyway, The Walls has been a staple on the server ever since the beginning and has had a gazillion variations created over the last decade. The game mode has seen a drastic drop in popularity unfortunately, but at the time it was the thing to do in Minecraft PvP. The next on the list is a famous old YouTuber world, perhaps one of the most famous of all time, Popular MMO's House. Popular MMOs is both one of the most famous and most infamous Minecraft YouTubers ever. Despite being later to the game, not posting Minecraft videos until 2012, Popular MMOs rose to popularity quickly with his original Let's Play, due to his energetic personality and leaning into the fact that he was, at the time, a true Minecraft noob. So the map with the house he built in this very first Let's Play series has made the list because a lot of people fondly remember watching him back in the day. And the house is admittedly pretty cool for old Minecraft with a water slide, secret rooms and passages, and a large greenhouse. Now popular MMOs has fallen off the map completely recently for many ongoing allegations of domestic assault as recently as last year. The full drama behind this has been covered extensively and doesn't really fit the scope of this video, but I thought it's worth mentioning nonetheless. Due to all of that, his website has been taken down, but I was able to snag an archive download link for the original survival world map with the house that I've linked below. Last, but of course not least, the Cops and Robbers 4. 
high security map. Cops and Robbers is a minigame inspired by Halo 3's game mode of the same name, with the first maps being made by Podcrash in 2013. The setting is a prison, and the concept is there is one player playing as the warden, and the rest of the players are playing as escaped prisoners. The goal for the prisoners is to, well, escape successfully, and the goal of the warden is to prevent that from happening at all costs. You may remember the exact video that catapulted Cops and Robbers into fame overnight. The Cops and Robbers video posted by the now universally disliked Sky Does Minecraft. Again, I said Cops and Robbers 4 as this is the fourth iteration in the five map series by Podcrash, but it was the most memorable and most popular due to this video being made on it. Similar to the stories from Vex and his minigame inventions, Cops and Robbers took off in popularity, though, like the rest we've covered in this video, has heavily fallen off in the recent years. Kind of sad, but it makes me wonder what the next generation of Minecraft minigames, and more broadly, the next generation of Minecraft maps will be in the future. If you're still watching, thanks so much. If there are any maps I haven't covered in either video, let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't, check out part one for even more nostalgic maps. And as for me, leave a like and subscribe if you're brand new to the channel for more nostalgic videos and more like this. As always, special thanks to my channel members on these signs. Special shout out to my knights, Crimson and Thomas Wellman Boyd, and my beloved lords, Vapichu and Dirty Dan. If you'd like to get on the sign wall, as well as some other awesome perks, use the join button below. I love you all so, so very much. Treat yourself to something nice today, and I'll see you in the next video.